really, Liz. All this anguish at breakfast. It can't be good for the digestion. Roger, can't you ever think of anything but yourself? Well, darling, when you get right down to it, what else is there? Your son. Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure things will be a lot easier when he goes away with his mother. Yes, I think of David often. I'll recall him fondly from a distance. <laughs> I must say you do this very well. In pretending to be sick, you manage to look sick. You look ghastly, Loomis. I mean this only as a compliment to your histrionic talents. I, I don't think I'm going to make it. Bravo, Loomis! Encore! Sarah Le Bernhard could take lessons from you. A brilliant performance. Help me. Well, perhaps if you told me what it was all about. Sheriff, when will you learn that you're supposed to solve mysteries, not create them? The local sheriff has periodic cravings for intelligent conversation, which I alone seem to be able to satisfy. He undoubtedly wants me to head a select committee for some unsuitable charity or other. Uh, did he uh, mention uh, why he wanted to see you? He wouldn't dare. If I knew, I'd refuse to go. Nothing bores me more than serving on these ridiculous committees. I'm sure it won't be anything important. I'm just not that lucky. David's spending the night at the cottage? David is spending the night at the cottage. Good heavens, I'm not taking this boy to the Antipodes. She no. is in charge of David. The last thing we need at this moment is an interruption from you, miss. I know you are the mistress of Collinwood, the keeper of the keys. Well, kindly rattle your keys somewhere else for the moment. Mother isn't going to like this. Well, maybe she's not, but there's nothing I can do about it. I can tell you that I feel the seance is the one real contribution I can make to this entire case. I congratulate you. It is the first succinct confession of quackery I have ever heard. Right. I know that you're anxious to have me leave Collingwood. Well, there is one way that you can hasten my departure. A simple request, perhaps. Uncle Roger. May I ask why? You may not. So, I'm to be dictated to by my little niece. How very charming. Well, then let me acquaint you with the plan of this evening. Carolyn, Vicky, myself, and the good doctor, all reputedly sane and rational people, are going to sit around a table and wait for some spook to say boo. Now, but you'll have to hear what I'm going to say. I have, and my interest has continued to diminish in direct ratio to your credibility. I don't mean to interfere, but I hope there hasn't been any more trouble. More trouble? I wasn't aware that there had been any in the first place. Well, I could hardly help noticing that the police had been here again. Oh, you couldn't, could you? I saw their car in the driveway. I see. It bothers me to think of anyone in this family being in any kind of trouble. Well, thank you, Mrs. Johnson, but nobody is in any trouble. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, because with all due respect, I like to think of this family as something very close, very important to me. Well, you should be commended for your loyalty. As for the police, believe me, it was of nothing important. Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that. There's nothing else. You've had a busy day, Mrs. Johnson? Yes, I have. Always on the go. I like it that way. Good night, Mr. Collins. Mrs. Collins? Good night. And I see no point in wasting my time with your telling me things that I already know. Aren't you at least curious what this does to our report? Curious? Not the slightest. Ah, uh, Vicky, you're back. Lieutenant Riley, hello. Good morning. Mr. Garner, I'm glad you're here. Oh, what is it? He's come to tell us that officialdom has finally agreed with us. Laura is Laura. He could be commended for his perception. Oh, then the... She cooperated with you fully, and so did I. And that, Lieutenant, is about all you can expect from us. Good morning. A doctor who keeps his method so dark and secret must have something to hide. Mr. Collins, believe me, I... The point is, 
I don't believe you. Excuse me. Now you get out of this house. No. I'm not asking you to get out. I'm ordering you to. I order you to leave this house. This minute. Get out. It's not very often that a man is invited into his own drawing room. Uh, join me in a brandy. And it's not very often that I'm offered some of my own brandy. May I ask you a question? Of course. Do you expect to be a member of this family for a very long time? How wonderful it is to know that we're still friends after all these years. I find it no less than amazing. May I ask more precisely how long you plan to stay here? It makes a man really appreciate a place like Collingwood. But doesn't Collingwood, in turn, make you miss your travels? <laughs> Not in the least. Then you won't be resuming them shortly? Well, no, I can't say for sure. Well, then perhaps you'll allow me to. I beg your pardon? Perhaps you'll allow me to say that you'll be resuming them shortly. I suggest that you leave first thing in the morning. Oh, I don't expect it'll be that soon. Well, if you'll pardon my bluntness, I'm asking you to leave in the morning. All right, I will. You'll leave? No, I'll pardon your bluntness. I was just gathering some wild parsley. My mistress likes a tea made out of it. <laughs> wild parsley, a French fancy, I suppose. How typical. Tea leaves are not exotic enough. If you're expecting me to apologize for speaking the truth... From you, madam, I expect nothing but narrow opinions of a lonely and fanatical old woman. It is at once a pity and a blessing that you were not born in France. Good day, madam. Very well. I'll go along with this nonsense. Mr. Dupre. But I trust the record, if there is to be a record, will show that I proceeded under duress. And also, if we may be fortunate enough to show that I was questioned by a complete idiot. Well, I just thought I'd stop by and have a little chat with you, son. What about? Well, it so happens that you've done something to please me for a change. I have? Yes. I can't think of that, of what that could be. Well, it seems that you had a visitor last night. If my mother wants to see me, I can't help it. You wouldn't want me to be rude, would you? David, I don't mind your seeing your mother. You don't? Well, of course not. I'm very glad that you're beginning to enjoy your mother's company. You are? Yes, I am. I think it's very good for you, David. I think it's very good indeed. There are some things that only a mother can give a boy. Aunts and governesses are no substitute. In fact, one could say that it's even better for a little boy to be with his mother than with his father. You could? No, David, I didn't say I could. I said one could. I really must speak to Vicky about your syntax. My what? No, never mind. And also, it's very good for your mother to be with you. She needs you. Her life hasn't been very easy. It hasn't? Oh, David, I wish you had stopped asking me these two-word questions. You're doing it only to irritate me. I'm trying to have a man-to-man -man talk with you, boy. 